Good evening and welcome to Solutionary TV. I am your host, Dr. Tatiana. Tonight is kind of a special night for me in that the whole goal of bringing Solutionary TV to you, the listener, our viewers, and our treasured patrons and sponsors was to give you an entirely different narrative than what we are getting with the mainstream. And we really wanted to answer or bring really featured guests that have the solutions and the answers to our global problems, but in a really entirely unique and organic way um, that allowed you to see where it could be applicable for you in your lives and also go a little bit deeper into the wholeness of self, the body, mind, and spirit. I'm a big advocate of this and a proponent. And we started with uh, guests like Suzette Faith Foster that had a miraculous healing, and we have delved into those that have had near uh, past life experiences like Dr. Eben Alexander and both doctors Jeff Schmidt and uh, Jeff McNary that have talked about the miraculous transformation of plant medicine and the deepening of consciousness. And tonight is a kind of a, a lovely culmination going into a whole new level of explanation into the mysteries of consciousness, that 95% that science is telling us is basically dark matter and dark energy, and, and therefore it needs to be explored and understood because it's not something that humanity has been focused on in our materialistic science view. So we're really going to go into a deep dive, and I'm excited to introduce our guest tonight. His name is Rob Potter. Potter. Let me tell you a little bit about him. Rob has been researching healing and consciousness for over 44 years, and in which time he has also given seminars all over the world and has a weekly radio show called Pyramid One Radio, Victory of Light. Rob has been experiencing UFO contact since 1975, after which he has been involved in sharing his participation with humanity in what he calls the Interplanetary Cultural Exchange. He has supported the work of Dr. Fred Bell, Luis Monteo Mertens, I hope I pronounced that right. He'll fix it for me if I didn't. Cobra of the PFC movement, Prepare for Change, and others that additionally claim to be contactees with intelligence from other dimensional realms. Rob has authored much of the information and important work and content that can be found on Prepare for Change, which is www.prepareforchange.net. Rob is a world-renowned expert on pyramid energies, having organized tours to Egypt, Bolivia, Peru, and has been developing energy systems for over 45 years in advanced healing and manifestation technologies utilizing pyramids, light, crystals, gems, sound, color in conjunction with Tesla coils, scalar waves, and quantum entanglement technologies. Really exciting stuff. He works in close concert with the goals of the Confederation of Light and is especially with the Pleiadian and the Venusian missions here on Earth. Rob supports the dissemination of grounded information based on love, peace, and faith in action in uniting humanity into its next stage of evolution. So this is exciting stuff. Welcome, Rob. It's really a thrill to have you here tonight. Thank you, uh, Tatiana. It's, it's an honor to be here with you and to share this information with your audience. We're not going to get through all of it, but we'll see what we can do. We're going to have some fun with it. I know the first time that you were introduced to me, I had the pleasure of being able to see you live. You know, we were in one of those teleconferences. I, I don't think it was Skype, but it was it was personal. And you had this wealth of knowledge. And I remember thinking I could listen to this man for hours. The the depth of your history and uh, understanding uh so much of what we have been sharing this earth experience and and this human experience in evolution with with you know space brothers with uh, interdimensionals with beings that that go into a really rich network into what our spiritual path is really about and I, I I wouldn't even really know where to start other than to say this has been a profound experience for you as a contactee but I think that before you had that um, 
very clear knowing that that was going to be part of your path. You were always driven to study consciousness and spiritual healing. So why don't we kind of start with when you had that wake up call or or what it was like to just know that from the beginning, Rob? Well, uh, for me, um, it started when I was very young. Um, I had a fascination with pyramids and kind of like consciousness and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And what happened was, is uh, I was talking about pyramids in high school and the girl says, you want to know about pyramids? I know the pyramid man. So <laughs> um, I met, I ended up meeting Dr. Fred Bell, who uh, his great uncle invented the telephone and his father worked for Henry Ford, uh, built the al- alternator and transmission for Henry Ford. And Fred Bell was a scientific genius studying the shockwave of the atomic wah bomb mm-hmm. under Leonard Katz at the University of Ann Arbor, Michigan. Um, when he was 15, he was then inducted into the Air Force. His story is told many times um, in my previous stuff. I don't want to focus on that, but I want to prepare your audiences today for the information that I'm going to be sharing with you all. Okay. And um, the first thing you need to know is that we're not alone. We never have been alone and never will be alone that our earth is currently in a type of quarantine situation in regards to our space family and galactic neighbors. Mm -hmm. And that um, we have always had contact and influences of different extraterrestrial types. um, And most of them have been benevolent and there have been some uh, different interactions. And the true history of the earth is not really known or shared by uh, the academics of the world, because if they know it, unfortunately, uh, the second thing people should know is that uh, the ETs that are here, many of them, the Pleiadians, the Venusians can can pass as Earth people. Right. So um, <clears throat> you wouldn't know it, but there's lots of them here and they're generally on a, a very benevolent and a spiritual mission uh, to uh, uplift human consciousness. They've been waiting for some time while we have kind of reconnected to our intelligence and um, kind of come back from a de-evolution from the times of the, um, the, the, the end of the final sinking of Atlantis and the uh, loss of our ancient technology and historical information, which our planet knew before. Mm-hmm. I also need to uh, share another important piece of information and I want you know and if you don't have an open mind and if you're not willing to research this information um, it's going to be difficult for you to wrap your mind around some of the uh, things I want to share with you Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not trying to jam any information down anyone's throat or to uh, sell somebody some piece of information because mm-hmm. the truth's not for sale. Mm-hmm. And I have to share the truth as I've experienced it and as I know it. And if you disagree, that's okay. But understand this, that six major corporations all run through Rothschild banking interests control all of the mainstream media. Mm-hmm. They have suppressed a lot of information. And understand also that there have been organizations and secret societies throughout the earth's history that have uh, garnered information uh, for their own ends, for their own power, and for their own control of other people. Mm -hmm. And um, they have lied uh, more more recently in our world, the democratic societies of uh, people who um, think we live in a democratic society our society is actually kind of engineered against it's, itself. So <laughs> yes. imagine this. Democracy is where it's kind of like what's good for everyone is, is good for the whole. So we supposedly vote and what everyone agrees upon would be the best. That's, that's almost like communism or a hive mind where we all, the needs of the many out, outweigh the needs of the one. Mm-hmm. So... Um, We have that system, which is actually not really viable. It's not intact, and it's um, 
our system has been hacked. They talk about Russian hacking. I suggest you all look up hacking democracy. And this shows that the Diebold and the uh, uh, electronic machines could be changed by satellites and you could change the voting. That's what happened to uh, when the, in the George Bush Jr. election and many others. Mm -hmm. uh, our, our democracy has been hacked within from traitors and power mongers within the United States government. Um, and there's a lot of political stuff that people are not aware of. Um, yeah, and I would just chime in on that, Rob. I think that we've covered in a, in a past show, we are actually a corporation of the United States of America. And within each state and each city, uh, there are corporations within corporations that, that you know, rule or abide by entirely different rules than what we've come to understand is the democratic process. So we've laid a little bit of that groundwork. I'm excited that you're going there. You go ahead and, and give us the next nugget because I know you've got well, a long way to go. The next nugget is, is um, um, you have uh, capitalism. That's diametrically opposed to democracy. Capitalism says, give me all I can get for me, 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 pay you the less I possibly can and exploit you and make the most money. So there's a selfish aspect. So these two inherent conflicts are built into our society, which is controlled by, uh, I will call them oligarchs or criminal act entities, mm -hmm. uh, not only at the political level of the simple, greedy senators and congressmen, but at the highest level, through uh, Freemasons and Bilderbergers and Illuminati secret societies that have uh, awareness of very advanced technology. Um, and we can go into some of that later, but it, it involves uh, mind control through subliminal seduction. And then there's a super mind control that goes into very deep levels of entrainment of the human population through manipulation of the frequency of your biomagnetic signature mm -hmm. or what I call your aura. You have a human vehicle, a shell that your spirit indwells. The mighty spirit of God, your I am presence exists within you. And this frequency between the, the, the soul, the self and the higher consciousness um, is being jammed by uh, an intelligent uh, uh, plan that works through, you're going to have to research the word HARP, H-A-A-R-P. Mm -hmm. You can also re research elf waves that run on your thing and, of course, cell phones mm -hmm. that are uh, buzzing in your body. And then you have genetically altered foods and very sophisticated systems that uh, have been built over years, including a world debt slavery system that keeps us so uh, stressed out and misdirected from our spiritual nature that all we're doing is uh, going to work, uh, hopefully going to work, sitting in traffic, coming home, uh, having a beer and going to bed. We are meant more for that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to ask your audience to wake up and live. <laughs> There's a big world of exciting information out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've had we've had some discussions about the recent disclosures um, with, you know, the, it wasn't as big of a disclosure as you and I would be hungry for, Rob. But when um, former Tom DeLonge of Blink-182 created to the Stars Academy, we know that that was first released in October that uh, members of the Pentagon and the Department of Defense and Lockheed Martin Skunk Works, uh, that he, he was able to interview and bring over to the Stars Academy um, to be a public benefit corporation, announced, yes, at least 70 years of disclosure that our government has known about extraterrestrial or, or unidentified aeronautical um, uh, visitors, as well as, you know, reverse engineered craft. So we know that that's um, become more mainstream and easy to start to discuss. I think that where you're going to go and where I'm excited to have you share is when there is this much secrecy and there is so much disempowerment going on, what really happens when we start having the kind of rapid disclosure that we're excited about? So from there, I'm going to turn it back over to you because I know you have a lot of hope to share with our audience members tonight. I, I'm hoping for uh, eventual truth, but the forces in the military that are unfortunately revealing this are going too slow. Mm -hmm. Tom DeLong is a plant. Uh, that, that information, look, they chose the kid. He knows nothing, mm -hmm. nothing of the history or the true space program. He's all excited because he gets to meet the military people and they're rolling out PABM, lies uh, of what they really know. And they're afraid. 
because they've lied to the people for so long and the amount of technology that's available that's been kept hidden and secret from the public could help the world tremendously and people will be, let's just say, blankety blank pissed. Mm -hmm. When you're driving in your car uh, and you think you're in your little chariot while you're sitting in, in traffic for hours and hours, creating pollution that's destroying the Earth's atmosphere when you could have been driving in magnetic lev cars, you know, from as early as the 60s. Mm -hmm. Let's be clear. The modern day UFO contact team movement took place around the 40s when the Venusians were very uh, interested in what was taking place with nuclear power. Uh, very dangerous for the Earth. It's very dangerous for all life streams. And they uh, made efforts to uh, contact the world governments to end this madness that had destroyed the planet previously. Mm -hmm. Now, um, there were contacts made. And let's get clear again, the government in 1950 knew of 52 different local systems with about uh, 80 different races of ETs that they're aware of, that they had cataloged and knew their their uh, size and, and their ships and uh, either through crashes or observation had been aware of. Mm -hmm. so this amount of lying uh, sets up a cycle of deceit and problems for humanity. Mm -hmm. And these decisions were made because the military and the political people at the time were in fear. Mm -hmm. The Venusian valiant Thor landed in Alexandra, Virginia, and was taken to meet Nixon and Eisenhower, and he had a crystal book. And I won't go all the details, but uh, basically Eisenhower took the book. They could Anyone who had it could understand it. And they offered help with uh, education, communication, transportation, a cashless society that would be not for control, but a cashless society that, does it, that revolves on abundance and prosperity. Mm -hmm. You have to realize that the nature of cooperation, especially on Venus, is so high that uh, it is like a hive mind. In fact, they are a matriarchal society. Mm -hmm. There's not as uh, there's not a basis of fear, and their planet has not been Ill infiltrated by hostile forces like ours have. Imagine uh, the Galactic Federation has had contact here. For millennia, for thousands and thousands of years. And there were certain groups that are kind of like the mafia, and they wanted to use humanity and our Earth as a resource, including the humans. And I'm not going to go into some of the deep levels of that right now. I'm going to ask people to go to my website, mm -hmm. promiserevealed.com, mm -hmm. and take a look around there. I have some interesting articles where I'm going to show you uh, secret space program technology that the governments had uh, was given to me by a guy who uh, used to have teams that put together all the technology. When they want to build a spaceship, which they've been doing for years and years, they subcontract all the metallurgy out to different groups. And one group, they'd have scientists come in who would put it all together. So none of the groups knew what they had or what they were building. So uh, there's a lots of deep, deep secrets that, that people in the organizations and in these systems are not even aware of. So be aware that the government has had a very uh, advanced space program, that the rockets are outdated, they're a lie, they're a joke, and they had to cut off the International Space Station feed because uh, so many UFOs, not only theirs, but other extraterrestrials were flying by and being seen by people. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, you're going to have to open your mind, people. Mm -hmm. Stop listening and, and having faith in these liars or these ignorant people on television who are fed information to tell you. You ever notice when you switch the TV channel and you're looking at the same sh same uh, information at the same time with a different camera angle? Mm -hmm. There's no free thinking. You have to look outside the box. And if you can't do that, you're going to find yourself in trouble because there's a lot of information coming uh, that's going to be revealed to humanity in the very near future in regards to our true historical origin. History will be rewritten. Yeah. On my website, I have a free book. It's called Veiled Invisibility. Unfortunately, right now, it's not up, but you can go to my website under books, and you can see that book, and it will open your eyes to the fact that the Bush family were actually Nazis, that they came here as... Uh, uh, spies for 
working with uh, against uh, or to get information from Nikola Tesla before the war. And then Prescott Bush, their family's actually name was Scherf, and they've infiltrated and, you know, it goes into drug dealing uh, in Iran-Contra and heroin and now methamphetamine is all run by uh, the CIA and very advanced high level uh, people in the government to support what they believe are uh, necessary secret programs uh, to create this uh, outer space technology group. Now, Eisenhower met Valiant Thor and said, look, I've been advised we can't talk to you because the, the governments and the military guys were in fear. Mm -hmm. He said, we offer you help and peace and to join a galactic confederation. But the government was in the Nazis, or was in the uh, Russian scare, and they felt that the ideas were communistic. Well, yes, uh, you, want, you want freedom from financial tyranny. Um, you make one car, the best car, or, or let's make it electromagnetic, a flying vehicle. Well, that's going to put the oil companies out of uh, business. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're going to learn the truth about the world's religions and the true message of the avatar Christ and uh, Buddha and what that means. That's going to blow people away. Uh, the, the Jesuits won't have control. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of secret groups that have manipulated humanity to their own ends and own profit. Unless you're on the inside, like the senators and congressmen who are deeply involved in these things, and some of them are bribed, some of them are um, uh, extorted for things they've done, for these very exotic, unfortunately, sex trafficking stories that you're gonna hear about mm -hmm. in the future that are gonna blow people's minds away. When you think you're voting for Democrat and Republican, it's the difference between a dime and two nickels. <laughs> We're going to have to wake up mm -hmm. and uh, get to the bottom of what's really happening and find solutions ourselves. Mm -hmm. Don't wait for the government because it ain't coming. Tom DeLong and Podesta um, and those criminals and those guys who are up there, you look at their faces, they're very dark and they're only telling part of the story. And um, there's a lot of information that needs to be revealed. And we have to go through kind of the shock and awe of that as a people. And I can just tell you uh, that the Galactics and the good guys have plans and we're gonna get that revelation mm -hmm. and that we can assimilate it and intelligently uh, understand it. We can move forward into understanding ourselves and who we are spiritually, which is really more of the information and mission that I'm on. Right. And and I appreciate you trying to give that such a well-rounded introduction because it, it has many tentacles and moving parts. And as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking, you know, I know that we've tried to cover, you know, the, the trillions of dollars that are missing as very um, impeccably reported by Catherine Austin Fitz, who used to serve, I believe, under um, the Bush senior uh, administration and, and keeps talking to the fact that there have been black ops, that this money has been moved to, that every time there's audits, there's demonstration, that there is enough money that has been misappropriated, that there are breakaway civilizations, which of course is what we hear from contactees and, and for those that are, are working with um, extraterrestrial brothers and sisters. And, and we, we recognize that there is a lot of disclosure coming out right now about governments and how far your, your vote is going. And there's a loss of faith that we're actually getting uh, clean and, and um, impeccable journalism because we know we've been able to see this. It's become more mainstream through disclosure that, you know, six corporations technically own all of that and that those corporations are run by very powerful individuals that have been in elite families and royal families, um, you know, since time immemorial. So I think we've got a couple of moving parts that are building up into it, Rob. I know that PFC and your contribution to PFC, Prepare for Change, may not be something that um, all of our viewers are really clear about. Let's talk a little bit about what historically we know because of esoteric um, history and um, scripture and, uh, you know, writings, tablets, Sumerian tablets, what we have understood about our role here on this earth and the cycles that we have a tendency to experience in terms of human evolution and the earth's evolution. Just coming back from Rhythmia, 
in Costa Rica and hearing Greg Braden, who does a, a really beautiful work on missing links with Gaia TV, but was a special guest there. He was talking about, you know, going before the UN with Dr. Bruce Lipton and showing them the core ice samples from Antarctica and also from um, the North Pole and being, you know, Greenland and and demonstrating we have these epics of of global warming and and cooling and warming and CO2 emissions, and, and they seem to be happening almost in 5,000 year cycles. And we're in this great year now that we've been trying to talk to our viewers about. This is where you're really pivotal in preparing everyone for the direction that humanity is headed. So I'm going to hand the talking stick back over to you because I'm excited about you sharing where PFC is going and preparing the public for these shifts. Well, um, I'm going to say there's lots of cycles. There's generally a pole shift approximately five to 6,000 years is a regular occurrence. And um, it, it, it could be smoother. In the past, we've had some situations where um, uh, the pole shift happened as a result of a flood that was allowed to take place. And that's there's a lot of information and background on that. Mm -hmm. There is a, a cycle that takes place every approximately 36, or 13,000 years, which uh, the Pleiadian says uh, 24,927.25 years is what they said, but, mm -hmm. um, this causes, uh, there's an energetic shift and, uh, some sources say it's because we're going through a certain area of the galaxy as we revolve around the central sun. Um, and there, that's called a cosmic day, 12,000 years and 12,000, uh, years of night approximately. So, we have this influence of magnetics of the of the various star systems on our auric fields. Mm -hmm. We are uh, life force energy centers that work um, in conjunction with influences of different magnetics. So our thoughts and feelings come from our endocrine glands, and these things called chakras are actually part of that um, influence. So imagine that on a planetary scale the vibrations and change. Still, the stars impel, they don't compel. We are responsible ourselves for our own uh, magnetic field. So the life force and the cycles that are taking place um, are grand. Do not look at the, the, the petty earth situation of politics. That is manipulated and controlled. Look more to the spiritual nature of your true self, and uh, connecting with your spiritual consciousness that is um, important for us to develop. Mm -hmm. Prepare for change. Uh, a, a guy I work with named Cobra, uh, who works uh, with the inner earth civilization, and I'd like to speak a little bit about the, um, the Atlantean civilization. After the Atlanteans, many of them went underground to create their own survival because of the nuclear radiation that was on the surface. And so they built these arcs underground and they actually, like Noah, there was a boat that was one on the surface. These were genetic um, repositories and seed banks to rebuild the earth after the flood that they knew was coming. Mm -hmm. um, and um, this was a long time. Many people didn't believe it, but the earth was decimated and we didn't come from apes and Cro-Magnums. Actually, we were a highly evolved spiritual consciousness with our two hemispheres of our brain connected. And the flood uh, and the genetic altering that took place at that time and the radiation actually dumbed us down to Neanderthal and Cro-Magnum. Mm -hmm. We're just now coming back out of it and we're ready to uh, uh, raise our consciousness. Now, we must know that our souls are, are immortal. And uh, when we die, we eventually come back to the earth and we actually uh, learn and grow in spiritual consciousness. So, I, and I don't want to get into that, but that's understood in the Bible when one of the uh, disciples said, Master, is it this man or his parents that he was born blind? Mm -hmm. So, if he meant this man, there obviously was something before. Mm -hmm. And it also says, In my father's house are many mansions, but the correct, the correct, um, interpretation is dwelling places. Mm -hmm. So if there are dwelling places, there are dwellers. Also the Dead Sea Scrolls and the ancient histories and all of the records show a lot of ET interaction, especially during uh, ET times, including with uh, the Master Jesus. So mm -hmm. this information has been kept from us and is uh, it needs to come out in the truth. I'm currently working with uh, Louis Mostojo is his name. He's known. And you can go on my web, uh, check me out on Facebook, 
B A B A R O B G O D. Someone called me Baba Rob God, and I thought, oh, that's unique. I can use that, and you can find me on Facebook instead of going to 100,000 Robert Potters. <laughs> on my website, I'm doing uh, conferences in South America. This will be my third year in a row. I'm taking groups to Bolivia and to um, uh, uh, South America where he has many contacts with these uh, societies that are underneath the earth. He's been to the various temples, one called the Abbey of the Seven Rays near Machu Picchu and another one near um, uh, the Alampu Mountain. And I was standing at 15,000 feet and I took a picture up and there's a heart-shaped rock where uh, there is these inner temples of what they call the Shining Ones of the Great White Brotherhood. That's not racial, it uh, re refers to purity mm -hmm. and also includes women, of course. Right. So there are these regions of the earth where these underground civilizations have existed in preparation and they're preparing a place uh, uh, to come forward uh, and they're making initiating contacts with uh, certain individuals who've made contracts in many lifetimes to bring about this information from the true history of the earth which they have not only in ancient records written but also through a technology of the akashic records and crystals mm -hmm. if you check me out on facebook i'm doing a series of posts and on my website if you sign up you're going to get a lot of blogs from raymond keller um, who's working with the venusians and has had a lot of experiences there so i want to encourage people to to check out because this narrative is going to go a lot farther than this conversation here i'm barely going to be able to scratch the surface of the information that um is important for you to know and you must have a balanced uh, place between your mind and your heart. And when you look at the negative situation, like the chemtrails that they're spraying to aid in the frequencies that they beam on the earth in outer space mm -hmm. to disrupt your aura and to cause you to go into apathy, fear, negativity, anger, to the point where you just explode and, uh, you know, uh, you kill your wife or your husband. These type of things are taking place and they're based on humans in misunderstanding of the natural laws of the universe mm -hmm. so what we're looking forward to is the open connection to our space family in outer space who can share with us the universal laws and teach us how we can develop ourselves through being the captains of our own ship controlling mm -hmm. our minds and intelligently uh building up our life force field or our living word of God that exists within us. We are a flame. We are a flame that is flickering uh, and, and run through a DNA uh, matrix that comes into our physical body, which is electrochemical in nature and generates a consciousness field. Mm -hmm. We have to learn about our chakras and being able to invoke light into our consciousness and to control our energies so that can, we can reach the higher states of consciousness and peace that will allow us to have peace within ourselves and we can share that with others. Mm -hmm. This is not going to be a takeover. They're not going to do anything for us. Believe me, the ETs are not here to take over. They're here to mentor. Mm -hmm. there, there really is a, more of a respectful boundary that isn't too far off in the Galactic Federation from kind of a Star Trek prime directive. If I understand correctly, right, Rob? There is an understanding that we need to be the masters of our own evolution, that we need to come to an awakened place of recognizing that we're a lot more than the stents meat suit and the five senses, but really have access to full levels of intuitive perception. And that moving out of third density into fourth, which we all sleep and dream in, meditate in, sometimes get high in, into fifth density where we realize one consciousness is communicating at all times, that there is a field that we all share and connect is a precursor to be able to actually interact in a much more um, brother and sister camaraderie way with our, our space brothers. Is that correct? Is that how you understand yeah, it? I mean, they, they contact people all the time. You interact with them and you don't even know it. So be aware that there is uh, uh, ongoing missions of the Venusians and the benevolent extraterrestrials to, to uh, uh, make contact with individuals and that's coming forward now. Since the uh, situation in Bolivia, uh, I've been working with a guy named Raymond Keller, and he's been going to Venus and uh, 
there's a whole history there. You're going to have to go to my uh, Victory of Light radio show, which is on my website. I'm going to ask you to go through my website and look for truth references. Go to Victor of Light radio show. Um, and um, I'm going to be posting a lot of the information on the inner circle, which you, uh, is for more uh, refined people and uh, to look into. Uh, I'll be posting a lot of stuff there. So. Um, this is something people need to research and to find out for themselves through their own education. Mm -hmm. I have some, um, uh, I'm going to be sharing uh, at the Mount Shasta conference, which I think we should talk about now, um, uh, that you're going to be coming to in Mount Shasta, California. It's called From Venus with Love. Yeah. And if you go to my website, uh, the first, I have slider banners on the top. The first one is about the Mount Shasta conference. You can read about the conference. I'll be having more information and updates there. And you can read the speaker's biographies. You can purchase tickets. And you can also um, see that um, in the future, I'm going to have some, uh, I have a Facebook page called Mount Shasta Summer Conference. And um, you'll be able to interact with people if you want to go. And gosh, I got to fly there and get a motel room and rent a car. I can't afford it. Well, you can go on there, meet people. And you can uh, make your own uh, uh, connections and arrangement to meet people and talk to them and see if you feel comfortable. Get your own ride share. Mm -hmm. uh, have someone pick you up who's coming up from San Diego at Sacramento Airport. And then you can share a room. Mm -hmm. Or maybe you can camp together. You can camp for free on the mountain. You don't even need a, a, a forest service. There's locations where you can camp nearby. Mm -hmm. So. Well, it's been very uh, well thought out, Rob. I, I'm, I'm thrilled that this is something that you've made so widely available. And I want people to understand why this is such a big deal that you've made a focus on the Venusians. I mean, this is this is the conference uh, from Venus with Love. They understand you're a contactee, but I want to bring the pieces together of how your experiences as a contactee, as an emissary of some of these beings, has brought you to a position where now is the time to understand the wisdom that Venus has been bringing us. You also have a recording you wanted to make available for our viewers. Let's talk about why this conference is all about Venus and the Venusians and their message. It just came to me one day after I was talking to Raymond, and I, I think it's pretty ordained. I've had some some um, uh, acknowledgments uh, from the uh, Space Brothers and Sisters that this is a good, positive thing. Uh, years ago, um, I heard about a lady named Omnek Omnek, mm -hmm. O-M-E-C-O-N-E-C, who claimed to be from Venus, and um, her story was corroborated by Paul Twitchell, who started uh, the Ekin Car. And I had heard her story uh, when I first was coming into the information of the Space Brothers, and um, I resonated with it. And I was honored in 2015 to bring her to Mount Shasta, and uh, I've invited her here again. She's kind of in retirement. She's done a lot of work in Germany. And she's kind of out of it, but she's agreed to come to this conference and she'll be answering questions for some time. I also, my friend Louis Mostojo Fernando Martens has uh, been in contact with Venusians and uh, there's lots of stories there that you can read on the website. And if you uh, research um, him, he does conferences. Uh, he speaks mostly Spanish, but um, his information is extremely powerful. He has many per personal experiences and he takes you out like in Bolivia. If you want to join us, you're coming down there. Um, you go to a site, he says, uh, the, you know, the brothers are going to show up and they show up on cue. Uh, the ships are over us and sometimes they just show up without permission. And these are the Pleiadians. There. Is is that more the, the sacred site uh, locations that you're going to at this point with Lewis? They're called preferred places of contact due to the uh, inner earth and the extraterrestrial contact in these locations in previous uh, time periods over the last 2000 years. Mm -hmm. That's a whole history in itself in regards to who built the roads, the Incan roads and the contact with the Incas that was made from beneath Lake Titicaca or the Great White Brotherhood Sisterhood coming out and contacting and traveling to uh, there and connecting with the natural uh, forces of the of the earth and teaching the people to kind of like a mystery school to raise your consciousness and to be work with the forces of nature. Mm -hmm. And they were so powerful in their unification. They created advanced uh, uh, agricultural and uh, uh, sites. They built along ancient megalithic sites. For instance, one of the sites down there is 77,000 years old. And it's actually a Lemurian outpost. Mm -hmm. Then you have uh, 
other other groups that have been there and uh there's a cataclysm where you know uh, Tiwanaku and Machu Picchu were were uh at sea level now they're at 12,000 feet so uh, it's not like the tectonic plates move slowly an inch a year there's upheavals that that bury entire civilizations and new things happen and that's why we don't find a lot of it in our geology although that what we do find is is controlled mm -hmm. so we're taking people down there and you can look on the uh invitation to the second banner which is bolivia and if that's for you you can check it out but uh we have had uh uh in some of my previous posts, you can look and you can see the spaceships that we filmed over us. And this isn't just about a spaceship and the light in the sky. This is about meditation and connecting because they do have the ability to utilize the technology for those who are in tune to connect with the earth and through their technology to expand your consciousness a bit and uh, entering into the silence. Mm -hmm. uh, there's two t teachings that are important. One is prayer. And that is for you to reach out to this, the creator and to humbly ask as a child would for guidance and for truth and with sincerity. And the other is meditation, meditare from the Latin to wait into the middle. So through controlling your subtle breath currents and the science of Kriya Yoga or the science of the still breath, you can enter into meditation and have a direct connection to God. Mm -hmm. You don't need priest to tell you. Mm -hmm. You don't need a, 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 a pope with their male uh, dominated lies. Mm -hmm. Not that the life of Christ wasn't real, but the hijacking of the message and the absolute ordinances uh, that are there are, are outrageous. We received a message. Uh, and I don't know, did you figure out the audio on that to share with the audience? Well, I I could too really try to bring it up through uh, an audio file here, but I don't know that I'm going to be able to get the quality that we actually need. Let me see what well, we can do. You. Let me see what this we can do. This is from a woman named Lady Orda. Yeah, let's go ahead and do an introduction to this, Rob. Tell tell our viewers what it is that we're looking to listen to, because we're, we're really diving in. The Queen of Venus. They have a hive, and every five years, uh, they possibly elect a new queen and the current queen can possibly ascend, but it sometimes goes many multiples of five years. The story comes from Raymond Keller. Mm -hmm. uh, he's in the National Enquirer when he was 15. He knew all the early contactees uh, and was very involved in the UFO movement and editing and connecting UFO for much of his life. I had never heard of him really, but he um, actually uh, had a heart attack in 2015 and decided he needed to put his story down into books and he's written three books mm -hmm. and i just uh released one of his uh uh newsletter or things he's he's letting me do some exclusives on some of his information so i'm posting them out there for the first time but um i gotta go through the story pretty quick because we're getting near the end here but he had um um uh, <clears throat> met a woman uh named Lady Orda through a guy that I had one of my first contacts with. When I was very young, I was having experiences with Dr. Fred Bell in Laguna Beach through contacts with uh, the Pleiadians. And they were coming around, we were seeing their ships, and most of my experiences were out-of-body experiences mm -hmm. that had to do with uh, astral travel. And I would find myself uh, in the wee hours of the morning because I was told that the mental plane of the area was mostly asleep so i'd do certain metaphysical um i'll just say um secret techniques i have to just call them that at this point in time that fred bell would teach me he had worked with uh these uh the extraterrestrials in this and um basically i'd get lifted out of my body and the spaceship would take me up and i wasn't having physical contacts it was like i was always facing the earth or facing the beautiful, beautiful universe, and I was getting information. I started to get weird with it. Like, you know, he wouldn't talk about my experience. When I come back, I'd like, what's going on? And he wouldn't tell me. And uh, I had to have my own experience. And I kind of respect that, but he could have given me more, I feel. But I finally uh, was invited out into the desert by a famous contactee named Gabriel Green. And Gabriel Green called me and said, Rob, the master, Hilarion, has sent a teacher for you. And I go, really? <laughs> so basically he called me and uh, the space people were listening in and 
I, I told them I'd be there. And when I hung up the phone, they put the they put a beam on the phone and made it ring like a fire bell. So it was basically telling me because I was 22, I could have easily, um, you know, met a hot girl and gone to uh, Zelda's nightclub in Palm Springs. I was doing massage out there, <laughs> but it was close to Yucca Valley. So I went up. And uh, a military guy was there who worked in uh, an abduction base, but had broken free of his mind control programming. And uh, the uh, Pleiadians had, had broken him out of jail. And he was guided around. I said, what's your story? He says, I'm guided around to people like you that is hoped to be important in the victory of the light in the future. And then I also break up negative negative things. So uh, the culmination, the apex of that experience was Gabriel Green, the military guy, and I went into the a guy near a guy named Bob Short's house and um, with a Michael a Legion in the spaceship land. And I had a telepathic communication to ground me to know that this wasn't just in my head. The lights that were following me home weren't fake. And so I had a real experience. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, um, my mission was beyond my capabilities as a young child. And I got to 22. I was like, what can I do? You better land and talk to me because I'm not really sure. But that wasn't in the cards. And I tried to share with people, but I was ridiculed. And I got a chip on my shoulder for many years. So sure. it wasn't until 2012 where I started to get respect with my information and my experiences from people. Mm -hmm. So I had a real contact in the desert. <laughs> you know, yeah. those people, yeah. you know, they said, hey, you want to pay for a booth and come? I go, look, I've had a real contact in the desert. You can't honor that. Um, you know, you know, those things are expensive to go to. And what am I going to sell, uh, you know, $200 worth of stuff and pay it? You know, I I, I have my own experience and, and it's not about money or trying to promote yourself. Right. A lot of this is about uh, the truth. So the message of um, the extraterrestrials from Venus um, is about uh, understanding the Christ principle, and that's the principle where spirit conditioned through matter, through time and space, and flesh returns unto spirit. So we're here to purify uh, the material world by raising its, our consciousness into the Christ or the, the balance. The Christ is the cross, the balance between the worlds and the breath, and understanding the multidimensional nature of the universe and ourselves. Mm -hmm. So Ray is uh, uh, one of these people. Gabriel Green, like I had that experience, Gabriel Green introduced to him a woman named Lady Orda. George Adamski, uh, in his first contact, said it was a guy named Orthon, and he was told to change her name and to make her a male to the public because people couldn't handle it. But she was born on the earth in 1585 uh, in uh, the Basque region, and she was put into a com convent by her family and she rejected and was running away. And in uh, her process, she met a being in a barn where she was seeking refuge who made her immortal. She then uh, uh, confessed to a, one of the priests and ended up uh, going to find her brother who was in the Crusades in, in South America. And she dressed as a man and a woman and changed her location for 20 years. And she was basically on the earth until uh, 1946. The Venusians came down and picked her up and took her to Venus uh, for a 12-year uh, training session into uh, higher metaphysical and spiritual truths. And uh, she returned to earth and comes and goes as she wishes uh, and was uh, George Adamski's contact. And all that information is coming out in a series of posts on my uh, website. If you follow me, uh, sign up as a basic inner circle membership for the newsletter, you're gonna get notified and you're gonna get a lot of good information from Ray. You're gonna see some posts recently on my, on my Facebook page if you go there to get that. So Raymond actually was in China. He'd met her and had, gone on, had several adventures with her and there's pictures of her that I just posted on Facebook and I'm uh, pumping her up a bit. Her name is Lady Orda. So she contacts him in China He's in the bee bar and he goes, oh, the bees, because bees are very important to the Venusians. And he goes in there, he's having a beer and she comes in and goes, oh, Ray, he's very excited to see her because he knows she's from Venus and, uh, you know, she's over, you know, what, uh, 600 years old or something. So, um, and she looks like a, you know, a beautiful woman, different than us, uh, but uh, even though she's born on earth. Um, so 
She says, you want, we're going to an Ascension party. Do you want to go? So he goes, okay. So she meets him the next day at his apartment and they go up onto the roof and she creates what's called a nimbus. And that is a, a blue circle. And if you look at the Bible, that's when Elijah was taken up. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically a sphere. Yes. It's not a ship. This is an energy device. So he gets in this nimbus with her and they travel. They can see, but they're cloaked. And it was cold. She raised the temperature for him in the nimbus. They land on the Tibetan plateau. And there's all these other nimbuses landing. And there's, he said, about 5,000 Venusians and Earth people were invited to this plateau. And below them is the cigar shaped mothership and Commander Valiant Thor's Victor One ship. And they go on board this ship and they go to Venus. And on the temple in the and the, on the continent of Aphrodite, in the in the city of Azure, there's a temple called the Zither Dome, and they were all there present to witness the ascension of the Queen of Venus. Um, I think her her name was uh, uh, I I forgot it, but you're gonna have to read his books, the trilogy Venus Rising, um, and um, uh, well, well, you talked to him, Venus Rising and then uh, Rockets to Venus and the best one, Cosmic Rays, Excellent Adventure. So they they land there. They go inside this big dome. And then these 13 angels descend from the top of the dome. They're immaterial in another dimension. And they physicalize and they sit in these chairs and they replay her life in a beautiful holographic display of her compassion and love for the peoples of earth and her service mm -hmm. to the peoples of Venus. Kind of a tribute uh, ceremony, Rob? Huh? A tribute ceremony to her contribution to her life. Is that what you're saying? So she ascends and then Lady Orda is announced the Queen of Venus. I'm going to end this. I know we're in an hour here. Let me get you the message from well, her. Well, actually, we've got the recording. The audio is ready to go. I'm going to hand this over to Amnon, my sturdy production manager, who has got the quality. And here we go. Dear friends okay. of Venus, the solar hierarchy of light of your sister planet, Abihar, extends joyous greetings to the inhabitants of the Earth. This is Queen Orda of Abihar speaking to you on a recorded message delivered to our emissary, the incarnation of Publius Virgilius Morrow, the one commonly known amongst you as the Cosmic Ray, Dr. Raymond Keller, the author of the Venus Rising trilogy of books, on Sunday, 10th February 2018. You should be receiving this message on the night of Valentine's Day, Wednesday, 14th February 2018, over Rain's radio. Our love and thanks are also extended to our cosmic brothers, Jeff Renzi, Frank Chile, and all the other brothers and sisters working diligently behind the scenes at Renzi Radio, bringing to the public's attention the truth that is out there, the truth about intelligent life forms filling the immensity of space and their visitations to Earth in the Ventolas, beam ships, swaps, Merkabas, and other ethereal star vessels that your military and political authorities have erroneously referred to as unidentified flying objects. The planet Abihar, or Venus as you know it, represents the highest manifestation of love and peace in the solar system. Your ancestors from the remote past recognized our world as the celestial sign for the goddess of love and beauty, as well as the herald of peace and understanding. On this night of St. Valentine, it is duly recognized by the solar hierarchy of light in place on Abihar that a message of love and peace is exactly what your world's perplexed inhabitants require at this time, for the purposes of securing their own mutual development and bringing about the long prophesied Aquarian Age of Enlightenment and Universal Understanding. It saddens us that your governments and religions so burden you with endless laws and ordinances, completely ignoring the sound advice of the Master Teacher Jesus the Christ, sent among you two millennia ago who taught the simple principle of unfailing kindness in love for the infinite creator as expressed and manifested through love for your own divine essence in the embodiment of the celestial spark that indwells and permeates all of your neighbors. Remember that the angels of the celestial worlds, and particularly of Abihar, 
and the other planets of our solar system, both seen and unseen, forever attend you. As the human being is well motivated by love, our advice is to continue to manifest kindness and good works, for you never know when you shall find yourself in our presence. Your manifestations of love will garner you the prize of life, both happy and eternal. This is how we shall build a new earth and, in turn, bid you entrance to the glories of Abhar and other orbs in the Pleroma. We, along with our brothers Cosmic Ray and Frank Chile, as well as our sisters Omnek Onek and Cherry Lynn, look forward to meeting you on the slopes of Mount Shasta on the 27th through 29th of July for the From Venus with Love World Conference. Our blessings are transmitted to you and yours on multidimensional planes for a happy Valentine's Day. Keep love in your heart every day so that each and every one becomes a special Valentine celebration. I regret that I cannot speak to you live at this time as I am conducting an important mission in the Saturnian system. This is the Queen, Order of Abihar. Okay, so what I want to remind everyone that is out there listening to us right now is the truth is often more mysterious, more colorful, far more imaginative than fiction. We know that we're in a time of massive disclosure. We recognize again and again that through the Joseph Campbell cyclical ways with which we view the world, whether it is our literature, it is our ancient history, it is our mythology, it is Hollywood at its greatest, there are stories again and again that talk about us being so much more than what we are. And I challenge everyone to look deeper into that consciousness field deeper into the mysteries that we are all addicted to with every Marvel film and and every Middle Earth mystery, and consider that there are truly a, a, a wealth of, of knowledge, of history, of scriptural references, of deep mystery schools that are seeking for us to better understand them and find placement at this transitional time that we're all experiencing in history. And Rob, I know we just have a few minutes left. Tell Tell everyone where we are with what hope and excitement we're looking forward to in the upside of this transition in the next minute or two, if you can. Well, I'd like to, uh, first of all, say that that was a message that was given to Jess France on Valentine's Day, but it was nice. We got a shout out from Lady Orda. Yes, there. you did. <laughs> um, um, and I'm going to encourage people to go to my website and to check out more of this information. You may get requests for more information because this is a lot for people to digest, but where we're at right now is a new level of contact is allowed to be initiated. Louis Martens had told me that from this year is very important and moving into 2025, uh, they, they basically had a communication for my group down in uh, um, at Machu Picchu received an, uh, a message from them. Uh, and this is not a channeling, this is telepathic information, uh, usually conducted with people who've been on board craft and been in advanced contact and the message was that there will be more and more contact from 2018 through continuous contact by 2025. So we're going to see some drastic changes in our geopolitical situation and for those of you who are awake and aware of what's going on, um, you're going to be asked to speak to your families and people and to share with them information in regards to the nature of this ongoing revelation. Uh, there are certain uh, situations that are being made available so that people can see and understand the truth of our extraterrestrial family and many people will be contacted. People who are not really ready or into it but uh, may be able to come forward with share information. There will be some changes. There will be some, at some point, uh, these uh, changes are going to affect our geology. They're working with the Sintamani Stone and the Golden Disk of the Sun and Lake Titicaca to establish new ley lines. The Earth is like a being and has acupressure points mm -hmm. and lines of force. And those are being changed. And uh, uh, But we have to look for the divine in this. We have to have faith and not go into fear. Know that you're internal and realize that this adjustment and this this uh, dramatic time of upheaval in our, our perceived reality is necessary for us to come in closer contact with the nature 
of truth uh, and align ourselves and our consciousness with the creator and with the message of the Christ consciousness. This isn't about worshiping some person saying, I believe you're my savior and your work is done. That's, that's some, you know, that's, I'm sorry to break it to you, but we have a responsibility to learn and to understand the true history. I'll give you a little tidbit of information here. When Jesus used to teach, he always had Mary Magdalene by his side. Uh, she had her own apostolic core, and the female was celebrated. No, even the, his own disciples didn't understand that. But the female is very important, especially now. Uh, and Cobra actually just made a post about it, that we need to uh, have a softened, uh, forgiving, loving nature and to forgive ourselves so that we don't carry these uh, painful memories that we have within our life and ourself uh, that are caused by people who abused us or a reaction and the horrible system down here. We need to rise above this and work together and to tune in to our own divine spirit. So um, I also want to say one last thing. If you go to my website on truth references, there's something called uh, my contribution to prepare for change. And there is intact kind of the overview of the general plan for the healing of the earth with the divine intervention of our space brothers. They are going to remove the hostile uh, extraterrestrials who have been manip manipulating us with advanced technology leaving let's say their earth minions to their own devices and they have very advanced technology and secrets that they're wresting from various uh, underground temple complexes which will be released to the public in the near future mm -hmm. we have to uh buck in our, buckle our seat belts and fasten our consciousness ready for a, a thrilling ride of mm -hmm. discovery and hope and love and peace for humanity if we will but accept it beautiful uh, thank you rob you know that's that's coming from such a clean place of what you were just referring to christ having made statements that were profound and definitely applicable now we need to really open our eyes and be humble like little children if we have been filling our our minds and our, our intellects and our sense of of history and science and anthropology based on less than five percent of what the true essence and nature of the universe is. If we've really been operating at such a small scale, we can't be anything less than humble and teachable and, and open to greater mysteries. And I think it really does start, number one, with that humility. And second of all, there needs to be a tremendous amount of applicable love, forgiveness, and non-judgment. We need to come together as a species. We need to come together as humanity. And we need to recognize that we ascend together, we evolve together, or we devolve and we destroy ourselves together. So I want to thank you for coming on the show. I hope that all of our viewers and all of our listeners uh, take what you can find and apply that has been shared with you tonight. Take a look at Rob's sites, his upcoming conference, some of the books and the authors that he shared today. We are going to continue to enjoy this wild ride of disclosure and understanding and enlightenment. And we are thrilled to have you because remember, together, we are the solution. You are tuned to the Nissan Communications Network. If you tuned in too late, you can always watch each program in its entirety or download an MP3 audio file of it in the archive section at nissancommunications.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook. Sponsored by Telestream's Wirecast Software, StreamingGear.com, Carolina Apparel, and DeltaForce.net.